Welcome to Ray's Toolbox. I'm Ray. Today I made a uh, live edge uh, river table for some friends. Uh, I always wanted to make something like this, never really had the chance to. They have the wood, or brought the wood to me. Uh, this is walnut, looks really nice uh, after we got it stained up. Uh, they wanted live edge on the outside and the river in the middle. Uh, they wanted a silver uh, gray color uh, to match where it goes. So we have a nice metallic river. They brought some deer antlers and some uh, gun shells to put in the middle. They complement each other pretty good, I think. So this table uh, wound up being 41 inches wide, 42 inches right, right in that ballpark. It's 10 foot uh, uh, long, 10 foot 3 inches. Uh, it's got a few little uh, personalities to it, but uh, I think everything kind of adds to it, complements everything. The end of it, we have a couple bow ties, um, have some natural cracks in the wood. I wanted something to uh, look nice and kind of, uh, like I said, complement the rest of the piece. So to make a river table out of this, uh, we need to get all of the bark off of this. Epoxy will stick to the bark just fine, but the bark eventually will separate from the wood itself. So first thing we have to do now is get that bark off. Uh, I'll scrape off what I can and then we'll have to sand the rest. Uh, we want the epoxy to have a good joint on this in the river. Some of the wood had pretty good chunks of bark left on it. So I took the draw knife and knocked the best of it off uh, first. The palm sander did a real good job getting the rest of the bark off. Uh, I have 150 grit sandpaper on, on here and it uh, seems to work pretty good. didn't have enough room to build this uh, table in the workshop, so I had to use the garage. Uh, the floor in the garage, of course, slopes toward the drain, and epoxy will self-level. So the first thing I had to do was build a table to uh, support everything that I could level up. I used two befores for the frame itself and three quarter inch melamine for the floor uh, or the top of it. Next it was time to route everything down to the same level uh, so I got out the router jig. Uh, I have a quick video on that if you want to see how to make one for yourself. The router itself leaves some grooves uh, on each pass, so the next step was to sand all of those grooves out of it. I sand it first with 80 grit paper and then work my way up to 150 to get a nice uh, smooth finish. It takes a little bit of time to get the end grains sand it down smooth, but it is worth it in the end. The first table that I'm making as a walnut for the stain.
So walnut stain over walnut wood actually looks pretty nice. You'll see when we get it finished here. Because the table is so big, I wanted to add some reinforcement to the back of it. Uh, these half inch steel bars will help tie uh, both pieces together as well as uh, help keep them from warping a little bit. Before I do anything with epoxy, I want it to line my table with plastic tape. Uh, this will help keep the uh, project from sticking to the table. Uh, it comes up really nice, really easy uh, with something like this. To fasten the steel tubes to the wood, I used epoxy to fasten everything together. It does a really good job of flowing around the tubes and it uh, fastens itself really good to the wood. Since this table has a live edge on the outsides instead of just a square edge like most tables, I needed to seal the edges down to the table before I poured my epoxy. So a little bit of caulking uh, along the edges worked re really good. Both side pieces and both ends I wrapped with plastic tape first and then put a bead of caulk down and fastened them down to the table. Made a pretty good seal. I didn't have any trouble. Any leaks? I mixed up enough epoxy to fill the river uh, one half inch, which is how thick my bars are. You want to pour an eighth of an inch at a time uh, to a quarter of an inch in that ballpark and then torch out your bubbles uh, to help make it clear to begin with. I had more voids. Uh, on the bottom side of the uh, slabs, uh, the epoxy naturally found its way over to that, so I did have to mix up a second batch of epoxy to go ahead and fill up above the bars. Uh, we didn't want those to be showing. The mica powder that you put in epoxy to give the metallic effect uh, will settle as the epoxy cures so you have to come back several times and make your design again uh, it's amazing the different designs you get with the different movements of your paddle the antlers naturally uh, were too big uh, to fit into the river so we cut them up and made smaller pieces uh, and then put the shells in where they went I had a little bit of a trouble with some of the shells, uh, like to burp some air. So uh, after I caught that, all I had to do was hold them up a little bit and let them go ahead and fill up with epoxy. The clear part of the river I also did in two pours. So after that first one was set up, I went ahead and topped it off with another uh, layer of epoxy. The first thing you do with wood and epoxy, you have to put a seal coat down, uh, two or three as a matter of fact. So you spread it out really thin, use a, a squeegee for the shower. Uh, it does a real good job.
the main thing we're trying to do is seal the wood so the air bubbles doesn't come up through the epoxy in your final finish. On each coat, we're going to spread it out over the top surface, and then at the end of your working the coat around, we're going to torch it out to get the air bubbles out, and then uh, apply some to the edges or the sides. We want to protect those as well, of course. It's your choice what you use to pop the bubbles with. You can use a torch or a heat gun. Uh, I like the heat gun a lot uh, when you're pushing epoxy around to make designs. On the final coat, it's a good idea to use the torch uh, because you're gonna have less chances of lint flying around. Epoxy needs a rough surface to fasten itself to. So between coats, you want to take some sandpaper, uh, about 220 grit, and rough up the surface. Give it something to bite a hold of. You can use the palm sander on the top of the table, but when it comes time for the edges, always sand that by hand. It looks like we're ruining the finish on this, but as soon as the next coat of epoxy hits it, it's going to be crystal clear. The seal coats, we want a very thin coat on those. Uh, we're only putting down one ounce per square foot. Our flood coat, we want three times that, three ounces per square foot. So after we mix that up and pour it out, we're going to take a trowel and spread that around first. Kind of helps mix it up some. The trowel that we use, of course, leaves lines uh, throughout the project. So we're going to take a brush and chop up uh, that surface tension and let it flow out uh, the way that it wants to. Uh, this is self-leveling. It will flow just like water and make itself nice and smooth, nice and level. On the final coat, the flood coat, you want to torch it out um, about uh, three different times, at least three times, about five minutes apart. When you mix epoxy up, all kind of super tiny air bubbles get in it, and they will work themselves up to the surface. We just have to have some patience. Everything is dry, uh, it's all finished, ready to go. I took a couple passes here so you can see the different uh, designs in the river and the wood itself. Deep pour epoxy takes a little bit longer to set up. So when I put the shells and the antlers on top of the metallic uh, layer, uh, they started to sink just a little bit and it really gave it a uh, look that is unique. I really like the way that it came out. The metallic in the epoxy uh, softens itself over time. Remember the sharp uh, edges in the designs when we took the stick through this, they've kind of blended it, uh, itself out and uh, it looks really nice.
I'm really amazed at the different colors uh, in this piece. Uh, the walnut itself, of course, is dark. It has a purplish hue to the center of it. Along the outside edges, there's some green, some yellow, some oranges. Um, it really looks very, very unique, very pretty. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, you can leave them down below or any suggestions. This is table number one of two that I'm making. The next one will be a different uh, stain and uh, we're going to have some blackjack uh, activities going down the center of it. If you haven't had the time to subscribe to the channel yet, uh, please do so. Ring that bell. That way when that video is ready, you'll be notified and you'll be able to see it. The couple that uh, had this table had the legs put on it and they was kind enough to send me a couple of pictures of what it looks like in their place. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you on the next video.